Hi everyone, my name is Natalie, so it is officially Women's History Month, which is one of those months that I try to do at least a few videos related to. I usually do a TBR, I'm not going to make one this month because I know I will be quite busy and I have a lot of books that I would like to read that are not specifically related to Women's History Month. Um, so I'm not going to make one this year, but I wanted to do some other videos related to just celebrating uh, women's history. And so today I wanted to talk about fiction books that feature women working. Um, so all of these books are books where the working aspect in, in itself is very central to the novel. I would love to hear if you have read any books that you really like that feature this particular dynamic with uh, gender and work. Uh, and office type scenarios. Uh, but anyway, so uh, let's just get into the books. The book I am currently reading and that kind of made me start to think about this topic is There's No Such Thing as an Easy Job by Kikuko Tsumura and translated by Polly Barton. This book is about temporary work. A woman walks into an employment agency and requests a job that requires no reading, no writing, and ideally very little thinking. And so it starts off with her working in a surveillance type of job where she basically sits for several hours watching surveillance footage of one individual and the purpose is to find evidence that he has been involved in not necessarily evidence that he's been involved in a crime but they are trying to find the stolen goods that he supposedly is hoarding and so she's basically just spending a lot of time watching surveillance footage where he is just sitting in front of his computer and he's eating and he's sleeping and he's very much spending a lot of time inside his home and she has to watch all of that footage and that is like 80 pages of the book and then I've just moved on to the next section where she has shifted and she has started a new job where she is writing um, audio advertisements for uh, a bus bus line and and so I'm sensing that the temporariness of the work is central to the book and that she'll probably change jobs um, soon again and that, that will just sort of be the construction of the book um, but it's also talking I think about identity as related to work and how much we how much of our lives are spent working and how easy it is to feel like work kind of shapes our everyday lives to the point that uh, especially with work that has very long hours that it sort of becomes our life. <laughs> There's no no space to have anything else going on in your life and so I think this uh, is a very interesting book on the topic but I'm looking forward to seeing where it goes. One I read quite recently is A Diary of a Void by Emi Yagi and this was translated by David Boyd and Lucy North. This one is specifically about being a woman in a very male-dominated uh, field and workplace and how the gender expectations and stereotypes within this workplace, especially the unspoken ones, shape the dynamic in in the office and she's expected to do various tasks that no one really says outright is her responsibility but they definitely expect her to do them because they kind of point out that they haven't been done and the only one who reacts is her because she knows that she is the one who is expected to do them so the book itself is about her faking pregnancy in order to kind of get out of, of this loop and it shifts the way they react to her but it isn't necessarily a better uh, treatment of her but it's still very gendered the reactions and the 
the way she experiences this um, atmosphere, this uh, environment. Uh, but I thought it was really interesting, especially with the Japanese context. Then I was thinking about other books that I've read on this topic and I realized that all, most of the ones that I could think of were either Swedish or Japanese. Uh, one that wasn't, that is American, is The Blazing World by Siri Husfeld. This one is about a uh, woman artist who is... she basically makes or she basically thinks that her art is valued less because she's a woman. That is the, the basic idea from the beginning. And she decides to make an experiment where she creates art under the pseudonym of... under male pseudonyms, three different ones. And not just pseudonyms, but she also has specific men play out the part of being the artist and the creator of her work. Again, this is about a very male-dominated field and how the biases affect the um, evaluation of worth in the art scene um, in really interesting ways. Obviously, you can probably guess that the experiment doesn't necessarily have the best of consequences for her as an artist or her worth, but it is a really interesting book. Another popular one that is on um, related to work is Convenient Store Woman uh, by Sayaka Murata and translated ooh, translated by, why does it not say on the cover? Jenny Tapley Takimuri. Um, this one, one of the things I loved about this one is exactly the fact that she just wants to go on with her life. She's completely content with being a small part in the larger machinery and making everything go round. She's been working in the convenience store I think for a decade or something and there's a lot about the expectations that she that she should want to advance and to be wanting more from her life, uh, that she's expected to want to have a family and kids and get married and, uh, and if she doesn't choose that at least to sort of progress in her career. And so there's a lot of the expectations as well woven into this story which I really liked. It is also sort of touching on how you evaluate your worth in in the work you do um, and how you evaluate um, your position in a workplace and, and all of that um, and and sort of how that is also judged from the outside. Another book that I really liked that is Swedish and I don't think it has been translated but if you can read in Swedish I would highly recommend it. It's called Linjen by Lise Karlsson uh, and this one is about working conditions, uh, specifically being inside a company, um, dynamics within a company, hierarchies, and identity as an employee, and an employee versus someone who is out of work um, status in regard to that. Um, just a lot of power dynamics within a company and also with the companies outside of the company. So the, the borders between um, those who work and those who don't, um, those who have been in this company for a long time and those who are just new to it. Um, I just thought there was just so many things in this tiny book that that I thought was really thought-provoking and that I hadn't really seen dealt with in fiction before. Uh, so I hope that this will get a English translation one of these days. Um, but yeah, it is a fantastic book. If you can read in Swedish, I would definitely recommend it. And then another Swedish book that is touching on work that has been translated into German and I think Spanish possibly. Uh, not yet an English translation, I don't think. Uh, but it is Nordtullsligan by Elin Wagner. This is a Swedish classic. I have no idea why this has not gotten an English translation. I know that uh, Elin Wagner is one of her other books on work it has been translated, but I haven't read that one. Uh, I think it's called Pen Woman. But this one is about 
uh, working women in the beginning of the 20th century and it's sort of around the time when women's rights movements were at the forefront of um, Swedish society and uh, it's about having the right to work and also fighting to have the f fighting to have a um, fair workplace uh, dealing with misogyny and sexism at work um, dealing with the uh, the unfair consequences of reporting such uh, such events. I thought this was fantastic and I hope again that this will get an English translation soon. The last one I want to talk about is one I'm again currently reading. This is one this is not specifically only about women working, but it's sort of connected to it. So it is Samladverk by Lydia Sandgren. This has recently got an English translation. It's called Collected Works. Um, I don't remember what the who the translator is, uh, but this one is about um, the main character in this book is Martin Barry. Part of this book is in contemporary times when he has been working uh, with uh, when his publishing company has existed for a long time for decades, and part of it is going back in time when he was a teenager, a young adult, and getting to know um, a young man called Gustav Becker, who is an artist, and also getting to know a woman called Cecilia, who he got married to. And so Cecilia is kind of a central character to all of this book because she went missing. Um, or she disappeared is probably a more accurate way of, of putting it uh, a few years after that they'd been married so she left both uh, her husband and her two kids and no one knows where she went what she did after that um, no no one has found her in several decades and the more you read on the more you realize um, sort of piece together her experience of this relationship and how much um, she wasn't able to do her job because of the expectations of people around her and of becoming a mother and being pushed to, becoming, to become a mother and having to put aside all of her own interests and dreams and plans uh, in order to fulfill this role that she was expected to to take on. So those are the books that I want to talk about today for fiction that feature women working and some of them talk about working conditions, some of them, them talk about um, discrimination at work and, and in various ways and with the difficulty in even working in the first place. Um, so yeah, I would love to, again, to know if you have read any books with this topic that you would specifically recommend. Uh, have you read any of the books that I mentioned today? Um, do you want to read any of them? I would love to know. And that was all I wanted to say for today. Hope you're having a fantastic March so far, and I will talk to you soon. Bye!